Did scientific advancement and technological innovation amongst Muslims cease around a thousand years ago? That is what Sam Harris and some of his friends would have us believe. The historical record, however, begs to differ. Al Jazeri, a master engineer and considered the father of automation, lived a full century after Ghazali. Jazeri's classic automata profoundly influenced Italian Renaissance inventor Leonardo da Vinci. Donald Rutledge Hill, an English engineer and historian of science and technology, stated, It is impossible to overemphasize the importance of Al Jazeri's work in the history of engineering. Until modern times, there is no other document from any cultural era that provides a comparable wealth of instructions for the design, manufacture and assembly of machines. The impact of these inventions can be seen in the later designing of steam engines and internal combustion engines, paving the way for automatic control and other modern machinery. The impact of Al Jazeera's inventions is still felt in modern contemporary mechanical engineering. End quote. Hill, who translated Jazeera's The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, also wrote, We see for the first time in Al Jazeera's work several concepts important for both design and construction. The lamination of timber to minimize warping, the static balancing of wheels, the use of wooden templates, a kind of pattern, the use of paper models to establish designs, the calibration of orifices, the grinding of seats and plugs of valves together with emery powder to obtain a watertight fit, and the casting of metals in closed mold boxes with sand. End quote. Towards the end of the 12th century, El Jezeri developed sophisticated water pumps. So have a look on this even more sophisticated water lifting devices. As the water moves the water wheel round, that's moving backwards and forwards. It's like a double piston pumping up the water through both pipes up right up to the tower. It lifts and pumps the water up to a height of 11 meter. Al Jazeera combines several sophisticated mechanisms. The pump works via valves that create a partial vacuum, causing the water to be sucked up from the river below. This pump is also remarkable because it has a double action. Each side takes it in turn. This double pumping makes it much more efficient. The machine is driven by the river itself, which turns a water wheel. And that water wheel is attached to gears and two pistons. Water is sucked up from the river by the pistons, which slide back and forth as the gear turns. By doing this, El Jezeri is converting the rotating movement of the water wheel into a linear side-to-side -side motion. It's possibly the earliest description of a crank slider, a fundamental component of many modern machines, including car engines. Moving into the 14th century, and restricting ourselves from now onwards to Tyson's chosen field of expertise, astronomy, we come to the Syrian scholar, polymath and inventor, Ibn Ashatir, who caused a scientific revolution when he produced an astronomical model that was the first to allow for empirical testing in astronomy. Many of Ibn Ashatir's mathematical details, systems and models reappeared identically in the discoveries of Copernicus nearly 200 years later leading some scholars to consider the high likelihood of the Renaissance-era polymath having borrowed from Ibn Ashatir at some liberty. Progressing on to the 15th century and moving eastwards into Central Asia, in the 1430s at the Samarkand Observatory, Ulugh a grandson of Tamerlane, calculated the stellar sidereal year to 365 days, 5 hours, 49 minutes and 15 seconds an error of just plus 25 seconds. Ulugh Beg's disciple, al kushji observed the rotation of the Earth, preceding Copernicus's observation of the same by roughly a century. Kushji's move towards astronomical physics was a conceptual revolution, a good century before its like appeared in Renaissance Europe. The mathematical and astronomical works of Kushji were so authoritative that some 200 years later, in 1650, they were translated and published into Latin by the English mathematician and astronomer John Greaves. Crossing over to the 16th century, we come to the Ottoman polymath Taqiyuddin Maruf. Taqiyuddin brought new methods and new instruments to the field of astronomy. 
He calculated the solar parameters and determined the magnitude of the annual movement of the sun's apogee to 63 seconds, best in Copernicus, who added at 24 seconds. The value today, incidentally, is 61 seconds. Taqi din was just two seconds out. As head astronomer at the Constantinople Observatory, Taqi din invented a number of astronomical instruments, including the observational clock we see here lovingly reconstructed by an amateur enthusiast. This clock was the most accurate and sophisticated such device of its time, and one of the most important innovations in 16th century practical astronomy. Now, considering what we have just observed with the naked eye, how Tyson the astrophysicist can claim that Muslim science ended in 1100, while the followers of Muhammad wasallam were still outperforming the rest of the world in Tyson's very own field of expertise well into the late 1500s, should be of particular embarrassment, a gaffe the American should not allow himself to get away with. Don't expect any retraction from him or from Harris any time soon. And in general, Islamic technology in the 16th century represented the best that was known at the time. It was not until the following century that the tide really turned. But even here, Muslims continued to outdo the West, just no longer in the sciences, but in the arts for the 1600s witnessed some of the world's most beautiful architectural marvels. The real story of Islam is sparkling, fascinating, complicated and gorgeous. And the best way to tell it is not with scary interviews and politics. That's just news. The winds of time will blow all that away. The truest evidence that any civilization ever leaves behind about itself is its art. Art never lies. It didn't lie about the Greeks, it didn't lie about the Romans, and it certainly doesn't lie about Islam. In summary, the moribund Muslim millennium is a theory we can easily debunk. The Muslims have yet to approach anything close to a thousand years of stagnation. Indications are they most likely never will. The first millennium of Islam, from 622 and well into the 1600s, was one of overall ascendancy for the adherents of the Quran and of their scientific supremacy. What happened next to cause the decline and reversal of Muslim fortunes, to the point that the West has now had the whip hand over much of the Ummah, and has been even more dominant in the field of science and technology during the same period, that is what we are duty-bound to address, once we deal with the allegations of selective Saracen science, that is. <laughs>